Let's see, uh, Joel, would you help me move this? We're going to have the kids come down again, and we're going we're gonna to look at prophecy and you, uh, see it from a children's perspective. So kids, come on down. This will be out of the way by the time you get here. Thank you, sir. All right, scoot, scoot back just a scotch so I can put my legs here. There we go. Oh, well, hello there, pretty lady. So glad you could join us. Well, you can stay as long as you'd like. But if you want to go back to dad, I'll let you. <laughs> this is not a prison up here. Unless you're my kids, then it's a prison. <laughs> All right, so, kids, you guys are going to teach the adults some things today. Did you know that? Uh, Yeah, you are. Because adults think they know the answers about prophecy, but we really don't. So, there's no lions then in this one. But in this one, there's some crazy animals. Or like animals. Yeah. So, what do you guys know of, what, what do you think the word prophecy means? Do you have any idea? Something that needs to be fulfilled. Okay, that's a good answer. I like that. Yes? Um, I think a prophecy is something that is told that people think will come true. It's like, to to say, something that's gonna, say something that's gonna come true. Yeah, okay. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say, like, whatever animal you think of, and it would be really scary if one just, like, spawned right next to you. Okay, like a spontaneous uh, creation of an animal. That would be weird. Did you guys, I got to tell you something. Did you know that the meaning of prophecy is actually really easy? And I bet you most adults didn't know this. So you guys can make sure and tell the adults later. You know what the meaning of prophecy is? You ready for this? You're not going you're, you're, you're to remember it. It's to tell God's truth. Did you know that? Adults, did you know that? The meaning of prophecy is to tell God's truth. What do you say? To tell God's truth. Oh. Do you guys know how to tell God's truth? No. Get into it. You, you tell what God said in the Bible. That's telling God's truth. How many of you, how many of adults, this was new to the kids, how many of adults would say, I didn't realize that was the meaning of prophecy? Who's going to be honest here? Come on. Yeah, all right, all right. We got multiple people all over. All right. I did. And you know what? They're just embarrassed to all raise their hand. Because <laughs> adults like to think Not they know. Everybody. Not everybody. Just, all right. Just. So we're going to look at this story about Daniel and prophecy. And what Daniel's doing is he's telling God's truth, okay? So Daniel saw this, he calls it a vision. You guys ever had a dream? Yeah. yeah. A scary dream? Oh, yeah. A nightmare. Did you? I, I, a nightmare that could tell the future? You used to have a nightmare, yeah. Yes. Just to let you know, a vision is like where you think of something and it maybe will come true or it won't. That's right. A vision is like you think of something and maybe it'll come true and maybe it won't. Sure. All right. Let me go with this for a moment, all right? I'll take some questions in a minute. So Daniel had this scary vision. And you want to know what was so scary? No, it was worse than that. So in this vision, he dreamed that... No, let me tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. All right, he's gonna, he dreamed that the wind created a huge storm on the sea. Remember, like we've heard of the... the, the like, a, like, like a hurricane, right? What? Like a tsunami, bigger. Except it was bigger because a hurricane is when two forces of wind collide... And Daniel says this was all four winds colliding at the same time. It was a massive storm, super scary. 
right? And Daniel is scared. And out of this storm come four weird, really weird animals. All right, so the first one that comes right out of the middle of the storm, how does it come out? I don't know, but it just kind of like walks right out. He said it, it's, it's a lion, but it's got eagle's wings. Like, like a griffin, yeah, sure, we go with that. Yeah, there's a, there's a, a mythical creature called a griffin, yeah. So, so then this lion gets stood up on its hind legs like a man. And then its wings get ripped off. But then, but then Daniel doesn't tell us anything else about the lion. He goes on to the next animal. Yes. Oh, you mean like the centaur kind of? Yeah, those are weird too. Now, now I got to tell you, the second animal was interesting. All right, the second animal was, he said it like, like a bear. Except, you know how when bears get really tall because they're trying to scare you? Yeah. He says that's how this bear was. It was up on its hind legs, but it had three, it, it looked like it had just eaten another animal because it had ribs just hanging out of its mouth with meat on it. And it was just chomping on them. <laughs> and so... So Daniel sees this, and then uh, the, the, the bear is told to get up and eat as much flesh as you want. Yeah, you. But remember, it's just a vision. Daniel's okay, all right? All right, this didn't, this, this didn't actually happen just like this. Then he says, while, there was another, uh, uh, while he was watching, another beast appeared. This one was like a leopard, and this one had four wings on its back. And it says it had four heads. Yeah, like a dragon, like an alien. Yeah, it was really weird. Then he and this one was given authority to rule. Then he was watching, and this is what scared Daniel. This is when the vision got scary, like a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. This is when it got scary because then he saw an animal that came. He said it was frightening. It was dreadful, and it was super strong. It had large iron teeth. Iron teeth, not bone teeth. Lion teeth. Listen, no, listen, I'm going to tell you. It devoured and crushed. So that means it ate everything, and it crushed. What it says, it trampled with its feet whatever was left. So there was nothing left after this beast came through the storm. And it said, and it had ten Horns. Ten. Imagine that, ten horns. Oh, what is it? It's not like a goat, just with ten horns. You know, ten horns. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is where it scares, scares Daniel. However, Daniel says that he sees that as he's watching this, he now sees God in the picture. In the vision, God comes in and he's seated on his throne. He looks white as snow. His hair is, a, is, is pure white. He said his throne was a flaming fire. Uh, and so in this vision, he says, um, uh, there was the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached God and was escorted before God. Now, the Son of Man is a way to refer to Jesus, okay? Okay. All right, so sometimes the Bible calls him Jesus, sometimes the Bible calls him the Son of Man. It says he was given, Jesus was given, authority to rule and glory and a kingdom so that those of every people, nation, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will not be destroyed. So here in this scary vision, ugh, scary vision, he sees, he sees, hold on, he sees Jesus. Right? And what happened? What do you think happens to Daniel when he sees Jesus? Well, he, would, he could be scared, but he also knows that this is God who loves him. He probably is a lot better than, the, than with the beast, right? You think he's a lot more peaceful than he was with the beast that was with iron teeth? 
But here's what I find, here's what I find interesting. He goes on and he says, as for me, Daniel, my spirit was deeply distressed within me and the vision in my mind terrified me. I approached one of the ones who was standing by. Hey, listen. One of the ones who was standing by, who was one of the people who was there with him in this vision, and he said, uh, and I asked him the true meaning of all of this, so he let me know the interpretation of these things. The huge beasts, four in number, are four kings who will rise from the earth, but the holy ones from the Most High will receive the kingdom and possess it forever, yes, forever and ever. So Daniel then wanted to know the meaning of the last beast, the one that was really scary, the one that terrified him. He doesn't even say what kind of beast it was. I don't think he knew. It wasn't like any beast he'd ever seen before. Like it, it didn't look like a regular animal. And so he wanted to know what this was like. And so the God, God tells him that, the, that this was... Uh, he also wanted to know about the ten horns... And, and so he says, the fourth beast will be, a, will be a kingdom on the earth, the fourth kingdom. It'll be different from the other kingdoms. It will devour the whole earth, trample it down, and crush it. The ten horns are ten kings who will rise from this kingdom. Another, different from the previous ones, will rise after them and subdue three kings. He will speak words against the Most High, that's God, and oppress the Holy Ones of the Most High, that's us, we're the holy ones of God. And he will, he will intend to change what the Bible calls religious festivals and laws, and the holy ones will be handed over him for a time, times, and a half time. So God's saying that this beast is going to crush the whole earth. And out of this beast are going to be ten kings. But there's going to be one who comes up and removes three of them, and he is going to be against God, completely against God. That's what it says when it says he speaks against the Holy One. What do you guys think this sounds like? What does this sound like to you? Yes, sir, you've had your hand up for a while. You think you knew it was going to be against God? Yeah, you've, you figured, that was good. You figured that out. Yes, sir. You think Nebuchadnezzar? Okay, well, this actually was, um, uh, this, we don't know if this vision came while Nebuchadnezzar was alive or not. All right? But what we do know is that these kings hadn't been kings yet. They hadn't been kings yet. So they just call themselves kings? No, they're going to be eventual. They're going to be kings. This was before they were kings. This was before they were kings. Yeah. But does this sound scary to you guys? No? Why, why not? If it was in real life, it'd be scarier. That's a good point. Yes? I think, it, I, think I know why um, it doesn't sound scary to us right now. It's because you're explaining it. it we didn't you actually see it. You haven't seen it yet. You haven't experienced it. Yeah. That's an excellent point. You kids are smart. So we haven't experienced it, so it doesn't seem that scary. But you know what? Daniel saw in this vision, he saw it was happening. And as he saw it was happening, it was scary. Have you guys ever seen a movie? Even though you know it's not real, you watch it, and when you're done, you're kind of scared because the movie was scary, and you're like, yeah. yeah. You don't want to go in your room. You don't want to turn the light off. Yeah. Right? You're afraid to walk outside in the dark. Yeah. Right? Well, even getting trash. Even getting trash, yeah. And this is kind of like that, except that what happened for Daniel was, it wasn't just a TV show, it wasn't just a movie. It was a, a vision. It was a vision of something that's really going to happen. What? So you think Daniel had a good reason to be a little scared? Yeah. Yeah. So the, 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 the scripture finishes, he says, that this is the end of the interpretation. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts terrified me greatly, and my face turned pale, meaning white. But I kept the matter to myself. He kept the story to himself. He was scared. He was scared to tell anybody, because he didn't know how it was going to look. It was scary. 
So how do you know if Daniel was okay? What? Vision. Vision. Oh, because it was a vision. Yes, that's how we know it was a vision. We also know that he, he finishes up, he says, but the court will convene and his dominion, this scary king, his dominion, so his kingdom will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. The kingdom, dominion, and greatness of the kingdoms under all of heaven will be given to the people, the holy ones of the most high. So his kingdom, God's kingdom, will be an everlasting kingdom and all rulers will serve and obey him. So in the end, Daniel sees that God's going to take over everything. God's going to be in charge of everything. He's going he's to remove these scary kings and he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna establish his kingdom. So what does that mean to you guys? What do you think? Establish, stab him. Okay, I could see that there's a connection there, but that's not the main point of this, though. Yes, sir? It's because maybe the kings live there and he wants to destroy the kings and they'll maybe respond there. Like okay, so God will destroy the kings and then they will respond by serving him? No, if they destroy the kingdom, then they won't respond. Okay, so if, 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 they dis- if God destroys their kingdom then they can't hurt anybody? Is that what you're saying? Oh, they won't be able to come back? No, it's like, it's so like, it's like, there's like this thing, this Bob thing that teleports them, but mm-hmm. if he destroys the castle, then it'll break and then they can't respond. They Got won't. it. So they're, 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 they're kind of stuck. It's, it's okay, it's okay. Hey, we can use illustrations. Doesn't have, using Minecraft as an illustration is a good, a good illustration, that's fine. All right, so what do you guys think God wants you, us to learn from, t- from giving us this story about Daniel and the vision? We're not in charge? That's a really good point. We are not in charge. Yes. What else do you think God wants we us to learn? We are not the boss of God. We are not the boss of God. Absolutely. It's the same thing as not in charge. Yep. Yes. We can never be like him. We can never be like God. Okay. Yeah. What do you guys think about... What, what do you think matters most because of this story? If you think this, what matters most? If you could think, you know... Uh, do you think that, you know, getting a new iPhone matters most in this story? No. No. Do you think that getting a new game matters most in this story? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> Goofballs. Uh, what do you think matters most in this story? Mm, I don't know. What? Staying alive. Yeah, that's an excellent point. <laughs> did, you, did you guys, yeah, what were you going to say? Trust God, okay. Yeah, I'm going to actually put this together here, okay? Because this, the whole point is, in this fear that Daniel saw, it's impossible to stay alive because this beast crushes everything and everyone. And how do you think Daniel thought he should stay alive. What do you think Daniel thought? Oh, I'll, I'll do this to stay alive. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? Maybe he's going to go inside of a helicopter because he can't just fly up there. Oh, he could fly over the beast? No. Uh, yeah. It's too big, guys. Ah. It's too big. Or he, or he can just go to heaven tonight. So if you can't beat the beast, what do you think you should do? You should. Okay, so, but who can beat the beast? God. Right. So, whose side do you want to be on? You want to be on the beast side, so when God kills the beast, you die too? <laughs> we have some silly kids up here. All right. But, right, so if you're on God's side, then you will live with God after he destroys the beast. Right? 
right? You can go like this. So I've got an important question for you. What does it mean to be on God's side? To love God. To love God. Okay, yeah, that was an easy one. Yeah. To live. To live. Okay, yes. What are you going to say? To make sure that you like him the most than anybody. You like him the most of anybody. I like that. That's a good one. Yes, sir. Okay, so you obey him and do what? So you obey God and put him over everyone else, right? So does that mean he's more important, that God is more important than school? No. Yes. Wait, wait, yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Does that mean that God is more important than friends? Yes. Does that mean that God's more important than playing a good video game? Yes. Yeah, I knew someone was going to say no to that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's more important. A lot of more is important, right? Right? Yes, sir. He's better than anything. He's better than anything. He's better than anything. Gooder, gooder than anything, which is true. Yeah. So I want I want you guys to think of something. Help me here for a minute. If you were to think, what would you tell the adults that they should do to love God more? If you were to say to the adults, be nice, don't pick on anybody, but what would you say that they should do to love God more? Trust God and don't fear him? Trust God and be sweet. Okay, that's a good one. You guys, you guys writing any of this down? You're getting instructions here. So, any other, any other, uh, any other instructions for how to love God for us adults? Oh, okay. All right. So, what are you going to say? Okay, for, for God to see you and talk to you like he would an angel? That would be very awesome. You're right. All right, so wait just one second. Oh, okay, go ahead. Don't what? Don't retaliate, retaliate against God. That's an excellent point. We, adults, we would never retaliate, retaliate against God, would we? No. Never, no. All right, so... Let's throw this around. Adults, what do you think God would have us to do in order to be on his side? No, oh, I asked the adults. Just wait a second. Come on, come on, adults. Trust God and come to him for salvation, right? Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. Well, anyway, what else are you going to say? Go ahead, Patty. Ah, we got to pray. That's a good one. Pray and, and, and seek his face and turn from our wicked way. What do you guys think? How do you, how do you think you should pray to God? Pray out loud. Pray out loud? Okay, that's a good one. Pray in secret so it's just for him. Pray in secret for it, so it's just for him? Yeah, that's another good one. What do you think? Make sure that you actually mean it. Make sure that you actually mean it. Those are all great ideas. All great ideas. All right, guys, you have been awesome. 
And uh, do you think we should be scared because of the vision that Daniel had? No. No. As long as you trust God and God knows that you love him. I think we could end with that. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a great ending point. All right. Amen. Well, you guys are awesome. Let's, uh, let's pray, and then we're going to have a song. Hold on, just wait, just wait a second. Yeah, that's fine. We'll get it in a minute. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the fun it is to look at your truth, and thank you that we can learn, even from uh, a scary vision, how we can trust you. And I ask that you'd be with each one of these kids this morning and with the adults that we would uh, put our faith in you and choose to love and obey you with all our hearts and soul and mind. And ask this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going we're to have a closing song so you guys can go sit down. Yeah. All right. All right, our closing hymn is number 534. Let's stand to sing. We're going to sing just the first stanza. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love.